both of you participating in the biomarkers session today. Um, what are your reflections back on, if you like, what the key points were that emerged about biomarkers in dementia research? I think it's been a really exciting morning. Fantastic yeah. to have partners from all different sectors, from pharma and academic and, and uh, patient advocacy groups, converging on the different roles of biomarkers. We hear that it's the same word, but it has many different applications. And to get clarity on that was really important. Um, that they're going to transform how we conduct science in dementia, uh, but they're not a replacement. I mean, don't you want to talk a bit about Yeah, well, I, th I think the excitement is really around new biomarkers, which are blood-based or plasma biomarkers and I think they are going to revolutionize the way clinical practice works, how we might screen for Alzheimer's disease, how pharmaceutical companies might recruit patients but as James was saying they're not going to be the sole thing that's going to be transformative. I think it also became clear that we need to assess patients and their cognitive function and perhaps link that with these new plasma biomarkers and I think that's where we can really make a big transformative step. Yes on the patients and to get to that point biomarkers are going to open this bottleneck which, uh, so that this wealth of possible drugs, candidate drugs, that is really not coming through into to clinical efficacy studies now, that, that bottleneck will be opened up by biomarkers, working out which types of patient, which type of stage of disease, is your drug getting to the right bit of the brain and doing its job, can it predict the outcome. So all these different functions of biomarkers are going to help bring forward drugs in, into late stage trials for efficacy in a way that's quicker, less risky, less expensive, but they're going to have to connect back to the patient experience, the signs and symptoms and cognition. Yeah. And, and I think that's right, that the possibility there is that we could have shorter trials in which we change the way we, we do trials and perhaps recruit much more sort of homogeneous patient populations. So I think it's really exciting what we heard today and lo lots of potential. Yes. Is the landscape in good shape in the UK for doing this, or are there significant changes that need to emerge? I think it's a really exciting time in the UK. We have all the elements and the goodwill in place. From industry strengths in the, in the UK, we have a very strong basic um, so biomedical uh, uh, platform across the Dementia Research, Dementia Research Institute, for example. We have superb clinical infrastructures and clinical research infrastructures. There's a new Dementia Translational Research Collaboration. And in between, really opening up experimental medicine, is Dementia's Platform UK. And there are many other sort of partners uh, in, in the field collaborating, and as we've seen today, talking together, working together, uh, and aligning uh, you know, our, our work and our, under a common agenda to get rid of dementia, to prevent it and to cure it. Yeah, we've got great infrastructure from UK Biobank, DPUK, right through to clinics which are in, interested in doing this kind of work. So I think it's a really positive experience. And it partly comes up to people. So one of the special things about today's meeting is the representation of people in industry, in academia, in healthcare, and those who work in both. Uh, and we have some really sort of concrete worked examples of career structures that combine the best of industrial insight uh, and, and the best of academic freedoms. And I think it's been yeah, a very exciting yeah, yeah. set of talks. In, indeed, of yeah. So academics aren't going to be able to do this on their own without industry. And I think industry isn't going to be able to do this without basic researchers.